All right, had to switch filming locations. I was filming inside my garage, but my neighbor and his son decided to, it was RC car time. So in my backyard now, and hopefully the wind noise isn't too bad because I have this noisy ass palm tree next to me. Um, something else I wanted to talk about is I opened this up on the real Tactech plate carrier. It has four straps on the inside. Two will be to do your vertical alignment on your plate, and then it has two more to center it to uh, accommodate different sizes and thicknesses of plates that you could put inside the plate pockets. This classic firearms version only has the vertical straps, which I mean, not that big of a deal anyway, because there's not a lot of side to side movement because most plates are tapered at the top. So if you just pinch it along the top, you're good. Um, the other thing on the classic firearms one, which also tells me that this is Chinese made, is it's vinyl coated on the inside. The real one is not. But anyway, talk about my setup. Go over my patches first, because that's the most important thing. Because you guys see these in the videos, but they're probably never in focus, so you don't know what they are. But anyway, so I got my Gunfighter Strong. This is the Hoffner Shield. If you guys don't know who Brian Hoffner is, He's a badass with a pump shotgun. He was doing it better than the Magpul guys like a year before they filmed their art of dynamic shotgun videos. On the front, got my butt hurts for the Hertz rental car. That's mostly for annoying commenters. Foxhound patch. Everybody should know what a blue stripe means. And this will be the difficult one to see. But it says roof Korean. Guess which country I was born in. But the reason I switched to the Tactech plate carrier years ago is on paper the features seem pretty awesome because I'm, this is the biggest reason why is because this the what they advertise as their yoke design for the shoulder shoulder straps because. When I'm out shooting with my crew, we're out there all day wearing our armor and this just fatigues on you so bad. And this is actually the reason that um, your pistol shots are so hard on those stages I run. It's because this weight bearing down your shoulders just fatigues you all day and it's actually just hard to present the gun. So I was hoping was changing to this setup because it looked like they were really padded and I was hoping like this design distribute the weight better because it seemed like that on paper and the advertisements they were doing when they were promoting this carrier because uh, by the time I bought it, it was already a couple years old. So I got it for that. The other reason is because of these channels right here because when I go shooting, it's usually 110 plus degrees out in Arizona. So I thought these channels would be a benefit and keep me cool because we're drenched in sweat when we take off our armor at the end of the day when we're packing up. So I thought, and also, you know, this mesh I thought would help out. Now, after using it, none of that shit mattered. It did not matter. This yoke design does not help you. This is not any more comfortable than any other plate carrier I've worn. These do not keep you dry at all if you're wearing a shirt. Maybe it's designed for how they're promoting it with the uh, Rogue Fitness guys for CrossFit. Like if you're not wearing a shirt, maybe this helps out, but you'll still be drenched in sweat. And if I remember, I'll try to throw in a clip of me taking off my armor at the end of a day. Because it's just... yeah. So that's initially why I switched to that. And also, like I said earlier, uh, it had a lot of real estate for patches. And I also thought that using this open weave style cummerbund would also let more air through my shirt. Nah, not really. There's no difference. I mean, I'm not getting like sweat marks through here, but I don't notice myself being any cooler using this setup. But anyway, so the other reason I went with this Tactic style plate carrier as opposed to the other ones that are more slick is... I did want a plate carrier that had shoulder straps that had a flap right here so I can conceal stuff. Like on this side, it's actually got my comms wire right here because I have a push to talk right here. And I hook that into my Howard Light headset right here. And 
I use, I don't remember what brand this is, but this is actually a 556 mag pouch, but because of the way it was designed and tapered, I bought it and I use it for my actual radio. And then I route the wires inside this. I think it's, I don't know if they officially call it their map pocket, but there's a whole bunch of cables hidden inside here that I conceal. And then my push to talk wire goes through the shoulder. Um, the other thing I wanted is I wanted a plate carrier that also had these cross straps right here for things like your sling and your hydro tube to help keep them in place. Now the sling, I do permanently mount this on this plate carrier. It's just easier, although I use a Magpul MS2, which the reason I got this style is it comes off super easy and I could switch it. And also this style is a quick release. So if I ever just need to get rid of the gun real quick, it's super easy to unsling it from the weapon. But this helps keep this from digging into my neck. And then that's also the reason I have a carabiner back here to also keep, because they don't have straps on the backside, unfortunately. And I didn't want to, you could, if you wanted to route it through the built-in drag handle here, but I didn't want it fraying the material with the, the hooks in here. Talk about my pouches. Um, I also, when I'm setting up a plate carrier, I also keep both shoulders free, clear, so I can mount my gun either side. Notice a lot of guys there. They don't I mean they're not. They don't shoot ambidextrous anyway, so they'll mount a bunch of crap on their off side here, so they could never shoulder swap if they had to. Talk about my pouch setup here, because I run a unique one. So right now I have a holster here for my SIG P320. And that's just because um, usually when I go out, I'm just running this gun when I'm doing the pistol portion of my drills, even though I have my war belt set up and uh, most of the time I actually have my Glock with me, but I'm actually running drills with this one because it's harder to shoot. So, have it here. And then on some of my older videos, you'll see me, I have a shotgun shell uh, set up here for quad loading, but lately I've just been running the pistol here. So I'm actually usually wearing two pistols. And the reason I don't run the Glock is one, I don't want to clean it because my carry gun, but also I like having a gun that I don't touch out there in the desert because you never know who's going to come up on you. And if I just got done running a drill where I'm at slide lock and I got no more bullets in my rifle, no more bullets in my pistol, that's why I'm still wearing my Glock fully loaded with the actual hollow points. Anyway, talk about the pouch setup because I run something kind of unique here. So I run these Phantom Gear Aggressor pouches. And the reason I run these type of pouches is because they fit anything. Now, I started buying these back when I was airsofting, and it's because I needed a pouch that could fit a G36 mag. And if you've seen a G36 mag, you can clamp them together. But if you wanted to do a reload, the mags are really thick. So these pouches are big enough to fit G36 mags, but they're actually designed to double stack 556 five, mags. Now, I don't actually run them double stacked like this because the problem when you have like this is when you're pulling one out, you have a really good chance of knocking the other one loose. So that's why I don't run double stack. But you could if you wanted to. The other thing with the Phantom Gear ones is if you're fast roping going out of a helicopter or something, these still come with straps that are velcro put in here and you could loop it over your mag now i don't use that function so but just to keep the straps i actually just keep them inside here um, i also dedicate one to a tourniquet but usually i'm just running single mags in here 
it has a band in the center for extra tension so this is your tighter one if you need the looser one don't use the band and then uh, what was the brand on this uh, fight or flight um, I run these pouches too but these are mostly for I use these for pistol mags really because um, I've only got on my belt room for one mag one pistol mag so I usually run different pistol mags in here but these are actually 5.56 five, mag pouches and of course it's got the big patch panel up front so you could run whatever sec accessories and things like that the other weird thing I do on my setup is I don't know if you guys can see this part here I run this bungee clip set up so I'll be wearing the play carrier like this and then I clip it into place like that and the reason I do that is I have this bungee system in here so if you've got if you got like a pistol out front and no mags in here this will start to sag like this it'll droop so to minimize that I have a bungee cord set up that I've woven in to the side and I also use the D ring as like a little retainer for my bite valve on my hydro tube so that's most of the front switch to the back this is my uh, Healy strategic flat pack um, I need it because one it's a a hydro bladder carrier that's the main function of it but also i wanted a backpack that was slick so i could still drive with all my gear on because a lot of people don't take that into consideration when you're building up your loadout i mean that's fine you could like you get loaded out with like 30 mags in your chest and stuff but can you get in a car and actually operate the steering wheel and your shifter so that's why set up like this so it's thin and this is actually set up more for uh, competition right now because in the competitions I used to do that the division I was in for armored one you had to have armor plates but the thing is you had to carry your hydration on you it didn't necessarily have to be in a backpack but I ran it in a backpack because they also let you run it like if you uh, want to use like if you had a cargo pants you could actually if you just had your bottle inside your uh, side leg pocket that was fine but um, some of the rules that they also had in there were you also had to you're required to carry any gear that you're going to use today on your person so here I got a Magpul DACA pouch and it's got tools in it and I carry some other random stuff that I don't want to be separated from when I got my plate carrier. So I've got my American flag bandana. I have spare eye protection and I keep um, extra hearing plugs in the pocket. So that's what I'm usually using it for. Although on some of the competitions, I was actually carrying all my extra ammo back here before I found out that you don't have to carry the ammo on your person. <laughs> So that could have saved me like three pounds throughout the day because I thought the rule was you had to keep all your ammo on your person too, but still a good habit to have. But anyway, so that's my plate carrier setup that I've never talked about before. It's pretty much always been like that in my videos. And now you have a closer look at it. Um, I do have plates ordered for this because I'm still going to test this out because I really wanted this for my truck because this is like my my full-blown battle rattle setup and I don't want this in my truck all the time because one like realistically if I'm out somewhere like at work I don't need my comm setup none of my buddies are going to be with me um, I'm not going to need my hydro tube for like some office shooting something like that so this will be a more slick setup that I'll just keep in the car because also if someone like rear ends me um, you're not allowed to take your stuff in your, out of your car during a car accident if you're not aware of that. So you got to go fetch it from this, uh, the yard when, you, when they total loss your vehicle. Yep. 
buddy. Jesus. Back in Arizona. <laughs>